watching AYV Television. Hello, this is AYV's Primetime News. I'm Dwight Neal. Let's start with the headlines. Committee on Appointment OKs proposed neck boss. Honorable members, I want you to join me to support Mr. Kone. Let's ensure that we have a free and fair election. Ambassador Anthony Navo Jr. recognized as one of the 100 most reputable Africans. This recognition is for the young people of Sierra Leone and Africa as a whole, and I will want to dedicate this to them, and um, because this is for them. I have been fighting for almost 20 years in my young career. And Kamarimba Mansare is still in police custody over alleged rape of 15-year-old girl. Hear me well. I have never, never in my life touched an underage girl in my life. Now for the full news. Yes, well, the president, CEO and founder of the Africa Young Voices Media Empire, Ambassador Anthony Naba Jr., has been recognized as one of the 100 most reputable people in Africa. Ambassador Naba joins other great Africans who are celebrated for their social impact as well as social entrepreneurship that is transforming business in Africa and affecting lives positively without controversy. Bokere Mietzia has the details. Reputation Pool International, a leading global reputation management firm, released the 2020 list of 100 most reputable Africans that features 47 women and 53 men from diverse sectors including leadership, entertainment, advocacy, education, and business. Ambassador Anthony Navo Jr. on social impact and social entrepreneurship, transforming African business and affecting lives, joined the likes of Ethiopian Prime Minister Ahmed Abi, Fatou Ben Souda, prosecutor at the ICC, Professor Patrick Lumumba, and Sierra Leone's Yvonne Akisoya, amongst others. In acknowledging the recognition, the CEO and founder of the Africa Young Voices Media Empire dedicated the recognition to the young people of Africa and Sierra Leone in particular. In fact, this recognition is for the young people of Sierra Leone and Africa as a whole, and I will want to dedicate this to them, and, um, because this is for them. I have been fighting for almost 20 years in my young career. As, as an ambassador for young people, as youth leader, now as a businessman, a CEO. Everything I've done within this period is for young people. This, this should just serve as a testament to what I've been saying, especially to young people in Sierra Leone and um, Africa as a whole. You have to continue to believe in what you believe in you, you have to maintain that integrity and credibility no matter what. Speaking on the impact of the Africa Young Voices Media Empire on young people and the recognition, he had this to say. AYV is a, is a great impact. I mean, both direct and indirect employment is close to about 500 employees coming from me to young people in Sahelian, Sahelians, most of them about 90 Nine percent of them are Sahelian, except of one or two are foreigners. So that is the impact I have created for young people, creating jobs for them, and not just jobs, but also creating that platform for their voice to be heard. It, it's huge. It's huge for us in Sahelian, and it's huge for the continent as well. But what does this mean for staff at the AYV Media Empire? All of us today we're celebrating because today um, a name has been boldly pronounced in the African continent. Ambassador Anthony Navo Jr. as one of the most um, hundred um, reputable Africans based on integrity, based on um, impact in society and all of that. So we feel like today is a very good day for us at the Africa Young Voices Media Empire. We are very much elated, we are celebrating, we are jubilating owing to the fact that um, Ambassador Anthony Navo Jr., founder and president of the Africa Young Voices Media Empire, has been recognized for his impact, his role in empowering young people across 
um, for continents and the globe. Reputation poll, known globally for its annual ranking of 100 most reputable people on earth and most reputable CEOs in various countries, is also set to announce a new set of research on 100 most reputable charity organizations on earth. And the organization has committed to honoring individuals, organizations, and brands that constantly impact lives positively around the world and in Africa. Bokari Matia, AYV News, Freetown. Well, still on um, Ambassador Anthony Nava Jr.'s recognition, youths across the country in the capital Freetown spoke to AYV's Bokari Matia on the accolade and what it means for youth in the country. Uh, first of all, why are you that? I feel good. I feel proud for him, um, you know, becoming a young man. And I all see how best he doesn't strive hard for they reach the high trade so today. So I feel good for him. It would tell every young person across Sierra Leone, either he did in an education field or he did on a business line, for they go in for brace up yourself and work hard. Because uh, too hard work can make a rich side, a day so today, we make the for column for that kind of awards there. I wish I'm all the best. Well, this means a lot for for for, for we Sierra Leoneans then because one, okay, the more we appoint for um, Junior Navo, no, 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 and all of the great man that Sierra Leone, then now the Junior Navo always do the youth them from back in the days, never mind from the time of the time of AYV stuff now be big AYV don't big so so so. So me congrats, uh, yes, for 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 that kind of thing and day, yes, that I believe say uh, can go achieve more. This mean great thing for me because I will not say G G G on any South Side day, you man will get employed. Yeah, then now uh, progress progress go with it. Then now more more facility go with it for the youth. Uh. Yeah. So so. So, 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 so that means something to so read the youth. Uh, they they will appreciate that more. Right, well, also, um, we here on the AYV's Prime Time News would like to congratulate Ambassador Anthony Nava Jr. for whatever, backward never. Now, President Julius Madabio has on Monday appointed Musa Timothy Kaba, former Director General of the Petroleum Directorate, as Minister of Mines and Mineral Resources, replacing Honorable Fode Radu Yoki. Anne Marie Baby Harding was also appointed as Deputy Minister of Mines, who was the Deputy Director of the Financial Intelligence Unit, FIU, whilst David Yamakoro Bobo is now the Director of Financial Intelligence Unit. All appointees are subjected to parliamentary approval. The Head of Media of the Sierra Leone Police Superintendent, Brahma Kamara, has appointed, has said, Mohamed Kamaremba Mansouri will continue to be in police custody as prescribed in the Sexual Offences Act of 2019. He added that the case against him is severe and needs proper investigations as more information needs to be revealed. It could be recalled that the allegations of sexual penetration with an underage girl by the leader of the, and chairman of the Alliance Democratic Party was alleged. He denied all claims which he described as an attempt to smear his character and silence him. Ransford Lobi Metziger has more. The Alliance Democratic Party leader Mohamed Kamarimba Mantaye has since 22 July 2020 been answering to questions regarding an alleged sexual penetration case of a 16-year-old girl in Kono, which he referred to as a ploy to smear his image. But, uh, it's not true. Um, that's why I want to make the max very clear so people can hear me well. I have never, never in my life touched an underage girl in my life. Um, this is a ploy, um, a setup. Everybody knows. Everybody that truly knows me knows that. Um, according to the allegation, uh, I took this 15 year old to a hotel, Diamond Lodge Hotel in Kono. I've never been in that hotel. Never slept in that hotel. In an interview with the head of police media, Brahma Kamara says the reason why Mohamed Kamarimba Mansour is still and will continue to be in police custody because the Sexual Offenses Act of 2019 does not allow bail of a person, unlike the Act of 2012. And the offense, according to Brahma Kamara, is a very serious offense. And we have been able to corroborate some of this. 
most of, most or all of the things she told us. And we are still moving on. We also have the medical report to confirm that indeed she was penetrated. And so on the basis of that one, we decided that we must bring Mohammed Kamarimba Masari to come and answer to the allegations. And as five minutes after one, he appeared together with his, with his lawyers, submitted himself to the police, and then we are now taking him through the process. So the investigation is still ongoing. If you're talking about this, uh, the Sexual Offences Act of 2012, you could be talking about bail. But the one we have now, there is no provision for that one. So which means somebody has to be in our court. He has to be in our custody. And the offence, like I said, is a very serious one. So this is why we are pursuing it. We have the power under Section 17, Subsection 1 F of Act Number 6 of 1991 for somebody who is positively accused or somebody who is suspected of having committed a crime or being about to commit a crime. That is the law of the land, the Constitution. So this is why he's not been detained. So he's been detained as per the prescription of the law. He ended by calling on all Sierra Leoneans to exercise patience as they will ensure that they will be very fair and objective. So at the end of the day, when the matter is concluded and charged to court, they hope to get conviction. Lands for Lubimetska, AYV News in Freetown. The Committee on Appointments has interviewed and allowed the proposed National Electoral Commission Chairman, Mohamed Kone, to appear before the House in the well for approval. Some MPs in the committee commended the proposed chairman and even vouched for him. Our parliamentary reporter, Joseph Johnson, reports. Today is a lucky day for the proposed National Electoral Commission boss. Tensions didn't rise like the case of the Supreme Court judges who had tough time to go through, even at committee stage. What most people expected to be a tough interview process for the proposed next chairman turned out to be an easy sale. Honourable members, I want you to join me to support Mr. Kone. Let's ensure that we have a free and fair election. You are fit for the job. What you are going to produce when you take the seat is a quite, if you take the seat is a quite a different thing. But we should all the best in anticipation that you be approved by the House, by the Honourable House. Before and up to 1996, we were in college together. Yes. Your activities then and today, are they still the same? <laughs> <laughs> The proposed next boss has successfully passed this stage, but it is not certain if he will go through approval in the next stage in the world so easily, based on controversies surrounding his appointment. However, there is need to brace up for the unexpected. Joseph Johnson, AY News, Freetown. The World Bank Regional Director for Economic Development, Francisco Galrao, has stated that before the emergence of COVID-19, Sierra Leone has one of the strongest growing economies, that despite the current situation, the country is still trying to meet its international financial obligations. He said this during the Sierra Leone Economic Update and Annual Report published by the World Bank. Our reporter Michael John Fofana has more. The Sierra Leone Economic Update is an annual report published by the World Bank which analyzes the country's economic development and prospects. Speaking during the virtual conference, Francisco Glario, the World Bank Regional Director for Economic Development, stated that there are still high rates of early child marriage and infant mortality, not only in Sierra Leone but in the sub-region. He, however, commended the Ministry of Finance for collaborating and cooperating with the World Bank by providing in a timely manner of all the relevant information and data to enable the bank carry out its work effectively, leading to the publication of the report. We continue to have relatively high rates of child marriage, early child childbearing, and low educational attainment. This special topic emphasizes the importance of women empowerment as highlighted in both the government's national development plan and the World Bank's country partnership framework. And let me say that prior to the COVID-19 crisis, uh, Sierra Leone's economy experienced one of the strongest post-Ebola recoveries compared to peer neighboring countries. Economic growth averaged 4.7% between 2016 and 19, and macroeconomic imbalances 
while improving with easing inflationary pressures and improving fiscal and external balance. Minister of Finance Jacob Jusu Safa informed the audience that it is unfortunate that the COVID-19 pandemic is yet to be won. Today, we are here to visit a virtual launch of the CNN Economic Updates 2020 produced by the World Bank. Thank you very much to the World Bank for consistently producing such thought-provoking publications. The specific publication is quite timely as we continue to grapple with the socioeconomic impact of COVID-19. The CNN Economic Update for 2020 examines the impact of COVID on the global economy, the CNN economy specifically, with particular focus on public consumption, the financial system, and external sector performance. The update goes on to outline the outlook, risks, and policy responses to the pandemic. Take this opportunity to formally launch the report, CNN Economic Update. The power of investing in gas. He used the opportunity to thank the World Bank for what he described as a thought provoking report, adding that the government will use it wisely in taking decisions affecting the people, especially the women of Sierra Leone. Michael John Fofana, AYV News in Freetown. Right now, members of the Mashdid Naim Youth Development Organization have refuted allegations of disrespect following a fight that ensued between some members of the Mashdi two weeks ago. Chief Advisor of the organization, Jibril Bangura, said the aim of the organization is to foster development in the mosque, contrary to the allegations whilst urging authorities to convene to intervene as well. Memuna Bangura has the details. No respect only for the big people land, the land of key and uh, uh, audience for the big people land. The land of even take order. Those were allegations made by some members of the Masjid against the young people. Chief advisor of the organization, Jibri Bangura, said, Authorities at the mosque must step aside as ordered by the Council of Imams and other stakeholders. We summon this press conference mainly for let people know the truth. Exactly about all waiting, they don't smear with character about whether they're true or not false. But we care in as much as this na Islam, na for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we all be. Any sound sign a mosque or church, for instance, na true life for prevailing. No, no. This mosque, we come for come do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command for you. Us we didn't say them for drebun at the mosque. Why you go drebun at mosque? This issue don't go to council of imams. Council of imams arbitrated it. And say, but one point the resolution, the key resolution, and say, now we're not dissolved. Now we're constitution, we are not operate for 23 years, we're constitution, say, four years, mandate. We're not dissolved. Let there be an interim body. Party A will provide a certain number of people, they want to say, four. But anybody will feel, say, in the most na in property wallahi not to in property the mosque na the community na in getta chairman and other members of the organization call for the reopening of the mosque so we need plead to the government all the way involved with this matter please with the sofa we want to pray with the feel pain all up with the prayer all the monks they always pray they are with the go down with bed up to the president of this country let them put pressure on their people there where they in charge of this matter for let it come on. Well, it's a religious council can open the masjid. Yes, now that now we force now now we, we aim right now. But thing be don't happen before this corona, right? It should be done, they go on. So we won't let justice can want it because they already know the truth. Because they be done they can't collect Juma money into a religious council. However, government has announced the opening of places of worship. But Masjid Nahim is yet to be opened as a result of conflicts within the mosque. Memuna Tubangura, AYV News Free Town. Right, well, the proprietors of the Dele Pado International High School at Allentown, Eudora Francis Brown, has noted that paying salaries of teachers has been very difficult, especially when the school is not in full operations. She made this disclosure when the past pupils of the school supported teachers at the school with no food items as a sign of appreciation for sacrifices. Ronald Joe Monrovia has more on that story. The attainment of quality education strongly depends on the well-being of teachers. It is against this backdrop that past pupils have decided to support teachers of Delhi Preparatory School 
with assorted food items. According to Emmanuel Kagbo, ex people of the school, the donation is in response to the economic challenge posed by the coronavirus outbreak in the country. We are all proud of our HGM because even in the midst of the Ebola, even when schools shut down, but our, our head teacher here have been paying the staff. So we see it fits. We are doing this particular session. We, know, we all know what the schools are going through now so that we can come together just to help our head teacher so that it can provide for the staffs. We know this is an economic situation in this land which is, we, can, we can't explain much about the economic trend in this land. Responding to the gesture, writers of Daily Preparatory School, Edward Francis Brown says, the support is timely noting it will help address challenges of teachers, especially with delays in paying their salaries. Well, the law as an independent school, it's not easy to get parents to pay fees when schools are not in progress. And so one or two of them spoke to us and asked us about, about how we're managing to pay salaries. And we said, well, we had to have a meeting with some very good and nice parents who thought it fit that we should ask for like 80 percent so that they will be able to manage the entire staff of 72. And so they said we'll come in with some food that will subsidize some areas. Among the items donated included 60 bags of rice, cooking oil, vegetables, and face masks for pupils. Ronald Jomorovia, AYV News, Freetown. Sierra Leone's Timber Association has appointed Chair Nodabo as the interim chairman for the association. The decision came after the association made a resolution to put aside the whole executive because of corruption. Joseph Johnson again. The association has gone through a lot over the past five months. The infighting has led to underdevelopment in the association. It has been also marred with corruption allegations involving the past executive members, namely Alpha Ba and Abbas Jane. The whole association has decided to move on by bringing an interim chairman, Cheno Dabo. Now, some of the leaders in this way they saw in this document that they know Al Ajiba and they know Abbas Jane. We all don't agree for that, eh? The coming of the new chairman is supported by both parties. The step we the membership take a very brilliant step for just put the two parties aside and bring a duty to somebody. I throw me support 100% to this particular man we the appoint so today. I've come to a meeting today to decide to select a new leader. I'm more than willing. I will give my support. I throw my support. The new man has committed to change the dynamics in their situation. We have to put our house in proper order starting from the executives of the district level down to the national level. We'll come back to the round table. We'll decide on how we should go help our timber business. Joseph Johnson, AYV News, Freetown. Now, men against rape and other sexual offences against women and girls marched organised by Men's Up Initiative has reached the south and eastern cities of Bo and Kenema respectively, with a peace march involving young men coming out to speak loud for justice. Sam Alpha Lahai reports. In the street of Kenema today is the Men's Up Initiative 100 March. Men have come together in order to fight against rape. In this country, you know, it has become a menace. And so men themselves have stood up firm in order to fight against it. With the recent launch of Sexual Offenses Mobile Corps, these men believe the campaign must continue against rape and other sexual offenses that have destroyed the future of teenage girls of recent. They took to the street of Bo and Kenema in the rains. <laughs> In Kenema, they were engaged by stakeholders at the Native Court Parade who encouraged them to continue the campaign in other areas and pledged to punish perpetrators. We see a man the way descent, where they protect women. Them. So we appreciate this effort by UNA. We will continue for support UNA for law put rape and sexually related offenses. Now, regional law put them behind back. That big on day, he don't grab, he won't educate them. Somebody grab, he go rape her. 
Nati way no fight at all. A winner among white chiefs that will say no to rape. Mike Baka is the leader of the men's initiative. He said they have decided to come out to tell the men that decency counts and that senseless men should stop henceforth with. We need a decent man community we go accept equality as a whole. So today, we don't do this 100 man match all over the county in Afriton, Abo, Kenema, and we get for aid for Makeni. So we want to make everybody know say this is an inclusive movement and we want to cut some rights across because great business not become a real issue what we need for attention. to. Having gone through all streets in Kenema, these men believe that if other men join them in the fight against rape, then the issue of rape will be a thing of the past. Many children will not be tampered with. For AYV News, Samar Fala reporting from Kenema, Eastern Sierra Leone. You're watching Primetime News on Africa Young Voices Television, Channel 33 and on Radio and 101.6 FM. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more news after the break. AYV is your home of credible, factual and balanced news coverage. We pride ourselves as the nation's most trusted news source. Because of this, our brand is likely to be used to spread fake news. To verify our stories, please check our various social media pages, visit our website on www.ayvnews.com or send us an email to info at ayvnews.com. Well, welcome back. You're watching and listening to Primetime News on AYV Television, Channel 33 and Radio on 101.6 FM. I'm Dwight Neal. Now let's join up and go over to McKinney for regional updates. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Primetime News here in the North with me, Augusta FM 2A. One of the oldest primary school pupils in Sierra Leone celebrates his birthday. Mohamed Lamin Tuye, who enrolled at the Rose of Sharon International Academy in Makeni at age 69, turned 70 years today. Abbas Ise reports. It all started in Kenya when Kimani Nganga Marug enrolled in primary school in 2004 at age 84. Back home in Sierra Leone, schools in Kenema and Makeni have respectively registered pupils that were 32 and 45 years old. But the enrollment of Mohamed Lamin Touré at Rose of Sharon International Academy in Makeni is groundbreaking. He was 69 when he decided to go to school, and he is 70 years today. Well, I'm celebrating my birthday. I was born on 7 July 1950, and today is my 70 years birthday celebration. I say thanks to the Almighty Allah for this day today. He God has fulfilled my 70 years today. I'm very glad. I'm very happy. I say thanks to the Almighty and the government of our nation. I say thanks to the president because he brought the free quality education. Now I'm attending now school. And that's why when I'm attending, that's why I have chance to celebrate my birthday today. Today is my 70 years. Mohamed Lamin says he decided going to school at this age because he wants to be literate and later become either a parliamentarian or a speaker in Sierra Leone's parliament. How will you go? go you will govern uh, uh, any post. You don't know how to read and write. That's why I'm going to school so that I will know how to read and write. I've collected a constructive English language from this school. I want to be the speaker of the House of Parliament. Abibatu Bangua is a classmate of Mohamed Lamin Touré. I like when Mohamed Lamin is celebrating his birthday because he's nice to me in class. For AYV Primetime News in Makeni, 
I am Abba Sisi reporting. Flash flooding is common during the months of July and August in McKinney. This month being one of them, residents are raising concerns as heavy rains are pouring almost on a daily basis. Jonathan Pangu visited flood prone areas to find out. Incidents of flash flooding are common in McKinney, especially in the months of July and August. As we are in one of these months, certain areas in McKinney are experiencing flash flooding whenever it rains heavily. The concern of residents is that McKinney City Council is doing little or nothing to clean up waterways or canals within the municipality. Where rain they can come, the water will be stopped, we actually. Because like last year, it not be a so affects because government will make it possible that we clean the gutter, the, the main gutter. Then. This year, we don't see nothing, nothing like that happen because last year, where they be clean the gutter, the water, the tension be eased. But like then there's a worrying become the water be almost go inside. Don't make the place fine never for the water, especially now. Yeah. Make the woman and make the don't snap or make the yeah. but no you will not get this way with the air not back you know, let the water let for the water. The water is around me. If any small to give this near you, you can kind of fever the killer. Because you can't pull out the they overcome one of the place, they will don't dry the place. No easy. So what are they affecting no more now? Seriously, yeah, seriously. Well, like I see no more, why me the disabled the patch patch the host? No the attack and go. No easy. Yeah. As the attack they come, the canal they don't clean, the attack they steady. Um, Trade will be a person who will be volunteer for do um, call you to my in response to this, McKinney City Council says they are constrained in terms of finances to undertake this project. But with the help of respective councillors, council is doing its bid to sponsor the project. Daniel Brahma Pukumu is the chief administrator of McKinney City Council. We have been doing our level best to make sure that the 28 canals that are very, very much strategic within the municipality are being cleaned. And normally what we do Year in, year out, we have been sending in proposal to the central government, the Ministry of Finance specifically, and Road Maintenance Fund for assistance, and as a council, so that we use those assistance to do the respective uh, cleaning within the 28 canal points. Well, viewers, thanks for watching. I've been your presenter, Augusta Etel Tue. Let me hand you back to our main studios in Fatal. Thanks very much to you, Augusta Ethel Turi, and of course the McKinney team, and especially um, the news. We want to wish you um, good luck on your 70th birthday, and we hope maybe you'd be the Speaker of Parliament. That's the 70-year-old Mohamed Lamin Turi, who has actually decided to return and learn something um, in education. But this is all we have um, for you on the primetime news tonight. Keep sending us your thoughts via email to info at ayvnews.com. You can also connect with us online at www.ayvnews.com or download our AYV mobile app from your Apple Store. Join us tomorrow for more happenings in the country, the continent and the world. I'm Dwight Neal. Thanks for watching and listening. watching AYV Television.